Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at doing some casting based upon uh, some vacuum-formed molds from a 3D printed part we did in a prior episode. So one of the things, if you remember back to the prior episode, I was having a little bit of problems with the heavier um, plastic. And one of the things I said I wish I did is put a hole in this. And so what I did is I went back and I drilled a hole to put a screw through that. I can tap a screw into. This doesn't stay in there when I'm doing the vacuum forming because obviously it lays down and the plastic goes over top of it. Uh, however, I did cast a much heavier piece and again use this to extract the, the uh, buck from uh, the plastic. So that was one of the things and I made note of that in the last one and I, I went off camera and did this and wanted to share that with you here. The other thing that I want to mention when uh, designing uh, your piece, your 3D printed piece to be cast is one of the things, especially the thicker the material, the more of a radius you have on this curve because it can't form around it. So one of the things you want your buck to be bigger than uh, or you know taller than your cast piece. So in this case what I have is I have a piece that's around 25 uh, millimeters um, tall and my cast piece is going to be about 20 so I made this larger to accommodate the various uh, pieces now uh, or, or uh, thicknesses of the material so you notice this thicker one which with the larger radius now what I've done is I've measured up 20 millimeters and mark that on each one of these and you can kind of see the thinner it is the further down or the tighter form this radius is. So uh, again, that's the other piece that I would recommend doing is go go through and mark the height of your piece because this is going to be your fill piece and because you don't want to fill it to the top because you're going to get that rounded uh, um, edge in your cast and you don't want that. So we're only going to fill to the uh, the mark. Now this one, this one is pretty messed up and, and this was one of the ones I was having a problem getting it out because I couldn't extract it. So we're going to set this one aside for the time being and we're really going to focus on um, these three. And my goal out of this is to, to again kind of show you the casting process and to kind of see how each one of these from the various thicknesses uh, come out and, and again the heavier duty for example like this mold uh, would last for I think quite a few castings whereas you know this 0.05 is going to be pretty flimsy and this 0 0.007 you know we probably only would only get a couple castings out of it so anyways uh, what I'm going to do for this one and, and again you can use a lot of different materials for casting for this I'm going to you use this um, cast material and what it is is it's five times stronger than plaster of Paris so um, should be very interesting and again I want to try this out because I, I my goal of this is to make some art deco type pieces and uh, I want something that's more durable than just plaster of Paris that I can uh, finish and coat so I wanted to give this stuff a shot so I'll put a link to it below this is the first time I'm us using this stuff so it's a three to one mixture so uh, three parts of cast material to one part of water. So one of the things that I did do is did do uh, this is a bad phrase I've been picking up since I've been doing YouTube did do. Anyways, one of the things that that I did was I filled this up with water and then poured it into this measuring cup and measured it out and and so I would get the number of ounces that this this held and pretty much this was about an ounce and a half of material so what I could do is measure up how much material I would need and then so what I've done is I've got that much water in in the mix and then I've got that much material to match it in a three to one ratio that I'm going to add together to create it my end mix and then I've got you know wood stirrer so the instructions on this uh, basically indicate that, that you should uh, place the material, the solid material, into the water, not water into the material. So you should sort of mix this into, if I got bring it back into camera, this into here. Now this is a, 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 a thermal reactive mix. In other words, this is going to get hot. It's going to create heat. So I'm also interested to see how that all works out too. 
So uh, I guess we'll kind of live and learn here a little bit with this. Uh, the other thing it recommends is gloves. I have safety glasses on. I've also got some gloves here uh, that I want to use, and that's why I've also switched out my black mat. If you typically remember, I have a black mat down here, but um, that thing's like 50 bucks, and I don't want to get this stuff on it and, you know, potentially damage it. So I brought back my old beat-up sort of green one, so if you're wondering why the difference. So I'm going to uh, kind of go in, into a bit of a time lapse as I go through this. So I want to clear out my work area a little bit here. The working time on this is pretty quick, um, so I forget what it said, but it's what, what it was not too. So we mix for approximately two minutes. Now, one of the things um, it, it needs to sit for at least 45 minutes before being removed from the mold, and 24 hours before completely cured. And so uh, I think I read somewhere around it's like 15 minutes of working time, but if you can demold in 45, you have a pretty short working time. So uh, anyways, what I'm going to do is again clear this out of the way and as I mix this stuff up and pour the molds, um, I'm going to switch to time lapse and then after when we go to demold, uh, after 45 minutes or so, then I'll come back and we'll take them out of the mold. So let's mix this stuff up. Okay, welcome back. It's been about roughly 20 hours since I poured these, so uh, I got a little bit busy. I was going to look at it at about 45 minutes after. Even at about 45 minutes after, when they said it could be demolded, um, I, I think I would wait more than the 45 minutes. So uh, here we are. So one of the things I want to do is work on demolding these. Now, the, the, one of the things, there are different types of potential releases you could use for molding. And one of the things I wanted to do is do this without the release because I want to be able to make sure I can finish the part with like an acrylic. And so, uh, and plus I want to see and, and show you guys how each one of these kind of works from a demolding aspect uh, with different type of materials. Now, one of the things to be aware of is I mentioned before uh, the, the the buck since it's 3d printed has striations on it for the different layers as you see now one of the things that probably would help would be maybe a light sanding to take down some of this and, and or I'm not a big fan of it but vapor smoothing uh, might also help to, re to release or remove some of these striations for the, from the layering because that's one of the things I think is going to be uh, a challenge here because I'm not sure if you can see this if I'm getting this in but the, the striations definitely to the thinner plastic applied so this is the 0 0.05. Now, one of the things I'm going to carefully do is take a utility knife and try to work it in here. Now, be very careful and cut away from yourself so you don't cut yourself. But I just want to kind of release it from the sides of the mold. Um, so and that's, that's what I'm doing here. And pull it away. And what my idea is, is I want to kind of reduce the amount of friction and see about how this is going to work to demold. So again, I'm working with the blade away from myself. And I think you can see, so let's see if we can pop this out. The bottom seems to be holding. I didn't anticipate this would be a pretty um, exercise, but that's part of what I want to show in this process is the demolding. And especially since it's sort of an odd shape, it's going to grab at different angles. And one thing, I want to try to keep this so I can reuse the mold at least a couple times. Um, because as I talked about in the last episode, the plastic for these are not cheap. And I'm getting it to somewhat release. But again, this is where the thinner material is going to, I think, work out better. And part of it is kind of pulling it from the mold uniformly versus 
ratcheting it out if you can get it so there we go so we do have a few casting marks in here from the um, the uh, wrinkles in the plastic so I wanted to see how that would come out and some of the wrinkles did transfer to this material um, I can clean it up you can you could lightly sand this I do have some of the um, striation marks uh, still in the sides here and one of the things I'm not sure if I can zoom in whenever you have a liquid you have sort of a meniscus that forms from the surface tension that wants to pull up on the side so no matter what you do you're gonna have a little bit of that in it and I have that here so I could clean that up and I do have a little bit uh, where it wrote up on the form so this was the the um, 0 0.015 so I could cast again from that but I do have I don't know if I would reuse this because I do have um, some of the, the pieces on there but nonetheless they did actually come out sort of cool so what I'm going to do is go to the thinner 0.7 and I might actually even get a little bit braver with the 0.7 because this is pliable enough that I might not have to use the knife So this one is actually demolding rather nicely. Uh, this one I got, this one is very nice. Wow. This one, the, the, the .007, and I can reuse use that mold again. So this is uh, really, so between the two of them, because in the first one, I think you can see, and I'll try to zoom in, um, definitely some marks, but this one, yeah, I, I like this material. This material does have a nice feel to it, especially where it's come in contact with the plastic. It's very smooth, and I think will allow itself to be finished. Now, the, the rocket on this one, where I have some mel, uh, mel formation here, I don't know what you call it. I guess I'm going to call it mel formation. This one is super, super, super. So this one is commercially viable on the 0.7 and the mold is reusable now the point three I poured this one anyway because when I mixed up the the stuff I was uh, considering it for four molds and I only had three because I wasn't going to use this one so I decided to pour it in anyway and you can kind of see how some of it leaked out and I caught it in the cup and everything but um, just kind of wanted to show how that um, would happen and then what I wanted to see with this, and that was the other reason that I did this, is if this was viable at all. If I could work with it to get a better, uh, uh, you know, vacuum, could I use the .03 and to see how it would demold? Because I think this mold would last the longest. But, uh... uh and I think I'm cheating a little bit because I think if the mold was not compromised, I would not have just did what I did. Okay. So actually, that's not bad either considering the mold was damaged. So uh, if I could get a better mold, and I, and I think... It, you know, and I think part of it I screwed up. I think if I'd had this screw in there to remove the buck, I don't think this would have been that bad. So uh, that's that's definitely an option. Now I have this guy, the 2.18. To be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to get that out of there in one piece. I wanted to try to experiment with a couple different things to see if I could loosen this up by tapping on it with a hammer. because there is absolutely no give to this material at all. So I think this is just going to be a lost cause because I can't even, I'm not going to cut my hand off trying to do this, but I can't even work my blade in between the material. There's just simply not enough give. Um, that's why I was hoping I could shock it out of the mold a little bit. I think if you wanted to use this one, you'd have to use some kind of chemical release because this is not coming out at all. I 
Oh, I see we broke it. That's what I kind of figured would happen with this one. Let's see if we can get it out of there and just see what it looks like. Yeah, this is this is wedged. Maybe if I would have poured it down a little bit, because there's actually um, where it tried to wrap itself back around, and that's actually part of the problem in getting this out. And I don't want to do that with that, and I don't. Let's see if I can pry up with that. No. Let's see if I can take an Allen wrench and huh. that sort of worked praying up. Uh, but that just you know something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Pretty much it came out uh about as I expected, so um the .07 came out the best, um, and this mold is definitely reusable, so I could probably get uh, probably three to five castings out of that mold. The um, .05 I think would be workable. I would have to work with it, to, I think, to get a little bit better uh, mold out of it. Maybe if I allowed it to sag a little bit more, I could get that. And again, even the point zero three, uh, I think if I messed around with the buck a little bit, I could get it. So, but going up to this bigger size, just no way. There's not enough flexibility in the mold. So, uh, anyways, um, because what I'm going to do is finish off this. And one one of the things I did want to also try, and I'll show you guys this again, uh, is this perfect cast. And as I mentioned at the onset, it's five times stronger than plaster. And that was sort of the idea behind this, because what I want to do is um, create art, a 3D print Art Deco objects and then cast them uh, in this material and then paint them and seal them and, and finish them. I think if you guys uh, you know saw my clock finishing video with the... Uh, uh, you know, stone finish. That's that's another great alternative for this. Is you know, lightly sand down the back to take the uh, this meniscus edge off, and then you could finish it with that. Now, the other piece that you could do is, I've got some acrylic craft paint, and you know, one of the things is orange is sort of my color. Partly because I hang out in the Netherlands so much, I've sort of adopted orange as a color. Um, for my channel, so what I'm going to do is plan on painting some of these orange to be sort of, uh, you know, uh, representative of the channel. But anyways, you can get uh, all kinds of acrylic paints like this. I picked this up just at Hobby Lobby, and this is autumn orange, and, you know, you can paint this up. And again, I think this would be fun projects for the kids, and I think there's also a nice uh, potential Etsy business here with this. So to 3D print the object, cast it in this material, you know, because this is going to be more resilient, both weight-wise and appearance-wise, than a 3D printed part. And, um, you know, you can create a sort of a modern or an Art Deco, you know, kind of go crazy. And that's that's a, what I hope to experiment with, is different means, not only with vacuum forming, but other forms of casting. Um, and then cast it, and then finish it, and then and, and sell them on Etsy. So uh, look forward to a little bit of that in the future. So that's what I'm trying to do, is kind of bring together the CNC, the laser, and all that other kind of stuff to, you know, kind of create, uh, you know, an end sort of home-based enterprise. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. I know I did. I learned a little bit, and uh, I got a couple good models out, because this one I can even sand and finish it. So... Uh, I uh, found it very interesting. So, thumbs up, subscribe button will be come. Don't forget to swag shop. And hey, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.